guys, welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2020 Volkswagen Jetta, courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check the link in the description box below. And so I'm definitely excited to be in this one today. I got the very top trim level of this one. I'm looking at a beautiful digital display front and center right in front of me this is going to be wonderful but so i wanted to check this one out today because it was originally introduced back in 1979 sold over 14 million units since then that is a ton of cars sold of course volkswagen gives you that generous four-year 50,000 mile barber to barber warranty where most manufacturers do the three-year 36,000 mile and on top of that volkswagen also gives you two years of complimentary maintenance and there are some minor upgrades for the 2020 volkswagen jetta so having said all that what do you say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Volkswagen Jetta first one being the S starting at $18,895 SE for $22,645 R line for $22,695 SEL going for $25,495 SEL premium for $27,945 and lastly the GLI which really is its own car in itself but nonetheless that one is going to start at $20 $26,245. And so powering this sedan, there are two different engine setups, one specific to the GLI and the other one being the one we have today specific to every other trim level, basically. Powering this sedan is going to be a 1.4 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 147 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 184 pound-feet of torque available at 1,400 RPM, power sent to the front wheels through an eight-speed automatic or a six-speed manual, which comes standard on the S trim level if you wanted to go that route. Zero to 60 time, approximately 7.7 .7 seconds. We will be doing a little acceleration a little later in the video here, but quarter mile time, approximately 16.1 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 30 in the city, 40 on the highway so quite possibly a very nice commuter car we shall see i'll let you know my thoughts but 40 on the highway is definitely a very impressive number if you do a lot of highway driving to work perhaps but all in all it does take regular unleaded fuel aka 87 octane but so touching on the gli engine that one's going to be powered by a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 228 horsepower at 6500 rpm 258 pound feet of torque available at 4000 rpm sent to the front wheels once again through a six speed manual or seven speed DSG that adds $800 if you wanted to go that route. Zero to 60 time, approximately 5.6 seconds for the DCT, 5.8 for the six speed, and MPG numbers come in at 25 in the city, 33 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel once again. But to them, before we do any kind of accelerations in this new 2020 Jetta, I did want to mention there is a drive mode button just to the left of the shifter, and that is going to give you modes like eco, normal, sport, and custom, essentially adjusting things like the throttle response, shift points, steering sensitivity, and the climate control system. So one of those deals where if you put it in sport, it's gonna decrease the climate control, decrease the AC, I should say a little bit there. But in addition to that, actually, when you put it in sport mode, it will actually illuminate this digital cockpit in red as well. That is pretty darn cool. You do have to get the digital gauges for it to change up the gauge display there. But if you did, that's pretty cool. Otherwise, it's gonna be shown in blue, but I do like it now. That it is in red. We did just put it in sport drive mode there so I think you guys know what time it is let's find a straightaway let's do a quick little acceleration here in our 2020 Jetta and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right you guys I'm gonna wait for traffic to end here and then we are going to get our straightaway finally and let's do a quick little acceleration test and here we go So it's kind of like merging onto the highway right there. You're definitely not going to have any issues with that. Not the quickest thing in the world, but that's what the GLI is for. But still, it does all right. Certainly not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway. So that's a plus. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, you guys, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.3 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.7 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, it's not quite as firm as I would like. It is a little bit on the softer side, but it's not bad. Certainly no issues with coming to a stop. 
did want to mention though the Jetta GLI ups that brake setup to 12.3 inches up front so a full inch larger rotors up front if you go with that setup and actually 10 inches a little bit smaller in the back coincidentally but anyways you're gonna get red brake helpers with that Jetta GLI as well but touching on suspension and handling a little bit up front you're gonna get a strut type front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back twist beam rear axle once again with the stabilizer bar adaptive damping suspension is gonna come with the GLI and that's really gonna give you the best of both worlds it's not only gonna give you a smoother ride because it's gonna monitor each shock absorber individually but going around heavy turns it's also gonna tighten up the suspension giving you a little better handling there as well and again, that is just for the Jetta GLI. Also, I wanted to add XDS cross differential system coming with the GLI and the R-Line trim level for the standard Jetta. So that is pretty cool too. It's essentially gonna help reduce understeer there. But as far as the ride quality has been today, it's been actually perfectly fine. Maybe I'm on super smooth roads, I don't know. Pennsylvania is not really known for that, but it has been perfectly fine. So definitely no issues there. Steering feel, at least in that sport driving mode, is definitely just fine. And again, that is going to be adjusted dependent upon the driving mode that you put it in. So if you wanted a looser steering feel, simply just put it in normal or eco maybe. But I do like the feel of it in the sport driving mode. That's probably what I would leave it in for that reason alone. As far as cabin noise goes, it's pretty much as expected for a compact car. Overall, you're not going to have any issues there either. And overall, touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine, really, really good visibility in the Jetta. I will say that. And one of the coolest things looking into that rear view mirror, it is frameless. It is a frameless rear view mirror. That is pretty darn cool with a little compass in the upper right hand corner and home link controls for up to three different garage doors, which by the way, is an option that we have today. But still, it is a really nice looking frameless rear view mirror but still back to visibility you can see perfectly fine out the back there I did want to also mention in addition to that when it comes to visibility rain sensing windshield wipers coming standard with the SEL trims therefore we have them today and the GLI meaning when the Jetta detects any kind of rainfall or even mist it will turn on those automatic rain sensing windshield wipers so you never have to worry about it kind of like automatic headlights you can better focus more of your attention on the actual drive itself so that's definitely a plus too and and yet again, on top of that, windshield wiper de-icer coming standard with the cold weather package. So that's going to be there for you too. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let me now go ahead and turn into my spot here. And let's take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Volkswagen Jetta. All right, and so here she is, you guys. Let's just go ahead and start up front on this one. To the sides, LED headlights coming standard actually for every single trim level. That's a huge win for the Jetta. And they, of course, do come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there, so you never have to worry about that. Just below that, fog lights coming standard with the R-Line trim leveling up. And there are actually LED projector headlights with LED daytime running lights if you were to go with one of the SEL trim levels. Then in the middle, chrome horizontal bars coming with all trim levels, but the R-Line and the GLI, they're going to actually give you black horizontal bars. And the GLI is actually gonna to add to that a single red accent line, of course, with the GLI badging sitting on top of that as well. Then make your way to the side, you will find a gloss black roof on the front portion at least of the Jetta if you were to go with the SE trim level and up. Then black window surrounds to go along with that with the exception of some chrome belt line molding that of course is what you're looking at right now. Take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels. They will come heated for the SE trim level and up and there will be gloss black side mirrors for the R line with integrated turn signals if you were to go with the SEL premium, but we do just have simply the SEL without the premium today, so therefore you're not going to see them right now. But nonetheless, I do actually like the fender accenting that they put on the Jetta. It's actually going to distinguish what trim level that you were looking at. So if you ever had a question about what trim level you are looking at, simply just take a look at that front fender if you're on a dealer's lot. That is going to give you the answer there. Take a look down at the wheel setup, 16-inch alloys with the S trim level, 16-inch black alloy wheels for the SE, 17 inch double five spoke alloys with the R line and lastly 17 inch metallic alloy wheels for the SEL trim levels and that of course is what you are looking at right now. Then make your way to the back matte black shark fin antenna found up top integrated rear spoiler kind of integrated into that trunk line and let's go back there LED taillights coming standard for every single trim level across the board that is huge a lot of manufacturers out there won't give you LED taillights but it really is a big win because the person behind you can better see you 
at night, so that is definitely going to be a safety feature right there. LED license plate lighting coming standard as well. That's pretty cool. And just below it all, a single exhaust outlet. However, it is tucked away, which is kind of like, eh, I wish they exposed the exhaust tips. But you do have exposed exhaust tips actually with the GLI, just not with the non-GLI trim levels. But you guys know what we have to do next either way. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are round back, there are a couple different ways to go about opening that rear trunk. There is a button on the key fob, that's probably the simplest way, and there is a button on the trunk itself as well. So a couple ways to go about opening it up. Once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 14.1 cubic feet, which is definitely a decent amount for the segment. If that was not enough space though, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for a good bit of extra space there if you needed it. And to go ahead and fold those rear seats down, there are actually two levers located in the trunk that is going to be how you're going to go about doing that but then making your way to the rear leg room that comes in at 37.4 inches so for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Do want to mention for those rear passengers, there is a rear center armrest with cup holders that comes standard. And let me elaborate now a little bit more on that cold weather package I had alluded to earlier. That goes for $500 and it is going to come standard on the SEL trims like the one we have today, but it is optional on the other trims. Essentially what that is going to give you along with the windshield wiper to icer I mentioned earlier is heated rear seats. That's why I was mentioning it now because heated rear seats, that's huge in a compact car a lot of other compact cars won't offer that heated steering wheel remote start and a windshield washer fluid indicator as well but those heated rear seats for the rear passengers that is so stinking cool love that the cold weather package and the sel trims are going to give you that for only 500 dollars too and as far as the rear seats go they were plenty comfortable for me but make our way now to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming standard with the s as e-trim level is going to add vtex leather at surfaces and heated front seats up here and the SEL Premium is going to add to that leather seating, six-way power driver seat with memory settings, and ventilated front seats, again, with the SEL Premium only. Now let's take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leatherette wrapped for the SE and SEL trim levels, but it will be leather wrapped for the art line. You're probably not going to notice the difference between those two anyways, but heated steering wheel again is going to come with the SEL trim levels or the cold weather package like I just mentioned to you guys. And when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Volkswagen logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch. And again, that times two button, that is your remote start coming standard for the SEL trim levels and the cold weather package if you were to go that route. But either way, if you didn't want to use that, there is a push button start for the SE trim level and up. S trim level is going to give you that standard key start. But so all I'm going to do now is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located directly to the left of the shifter. And so here's the question everybody is going to ask. As far as that startup goes, it is a full digital gauge setup, a full digital cockpit for the SEL trim levels, meaning the SEL and the SEL premiums. So that is how you're going to go about getting that. They look absolutely wonderful. Any of the other trim levels is going to give you a standard gauge setup, which is nice as well, but it is nowhere near as cool as this digital cockpit that they have here in the SEL trim levels. And of course, that can be completely adjusted by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. You could toggle between a digital speedometer. There's your oil temp, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's also your radio information, safety information. There's a compass up there, Bluetooth information. The list goes on basically, but perhaps my favorite button on the steering wheel is labeled view. So this is kind of like Audi's virtual cockpit basically. You hit that view button and the gauges become either larger or smaller. So you have the option to make other things larger like the Bluetooth information or the miles you have left until you hit empty or your compass or whatever you want to do. That is pretty stinking cool. And then if you hit the view button again, it gives you yet another view that you can set up up there, giving you information on the left and the right. You hit it the third time, you're back at your normal gauge displays again. So really three different views you can go about toggling through on the Volkswagen Jetta and is absolutely amazing digital cockpit. I absolutely love this. And like I was mentioning earlier to you guys, if you change the driving mode, it is going to adjust the color 
of those gauges as well between blue and red so that makes it even more cool so gotta love it anyways let's go ahead now and make our way to overall interior quality panoramic sunroof coming with the se trim level actually and up usually you don't find a panoramic sunroof on one of the lower trim levels so that's pretty cool black headliner with the r-line trim level only dual zone climate control with the se trim level and up there is a wireless phone charger for the sel trim levels that's probably the biggest change for the 2020 jetta so that's going to be located of course just in front of the shifter we do have that since we have an sel trim today so that's pretty cool ambient lighting with 10 different color choices that is my favorite part you guys and so to go ahead and adjust those different colors there's actually a car button on the infotainment screen i'll get more into that in a second here but then you have the selection for ambient lighting there's a button in the bottom right hand corner then you have choices between red orange yellow like a lime highlighter yellow there's an aqua there's blue there's dark blue there's pink there's gold there's white there's a bunch of different interior color options you know what best part about this is i didn't mention it to you guys when you adjust this ambient lighting it adjusts the gauges as well if you want pink gauges you can get it with that ambient lighting that is awesome and again that's just for the sel trim levels but that is the coolest thing in the world who doesn't want pink gauges nonetheless that's my very favorite part about the interior quality without a doubt not to mention another really cool thing is the infotainment screen all of the climate control all of that is all tilted slightly towards the driver just like in let's say the nissan gtr it's more of a driver centric cockpit here so that is pretty cool i like the brushed aluminum trim that's found on the doors it ties together to just above the passenger side glove box there overhead sunglass holder on the roof that's always a plus as well again i mentioned to you guys the frameless rear view mirror with home link controls throughout the three different garage doors and the compass in the upper right hand corner just in front of the shifter again that wireless phone charger usb charging port just to the left of the shifter in case anybody was curious there is an electro mechanical parking brake and there is a button to actually turn off the auto start stop system which turns off the vehicle when you're stopped at a red light or a stop sign just behind the shifter there's a little storage area dual cup holder and you got some more storage located under the center armrest with another USB charging port actually as well. And they made it a light color within the center armrest when everything else is black. I guess minus the headliner. The headliner is light too. But overall, absolutely amazing interior quality. I could look at this digital gauge setup all day and I could adjust the colors of it all day as well. And I actually do do that in my Mustang. So anyways, absolutely love it. Let's now go ahead to take a look at that tech display now. Six and a half inch color touchscreen display coming with the S. SE and R line trim levels and the base GLI. Then there is an 8 inch color touchscreen display for the SEL trims and the GLI Autobahn. And so this currently is the setup that we are looking at right now. It does give you Bluetooth and audio streaming either way. Also, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay will come standard. Either tech display that you go with, that's a huge plus even for the bottom trim level. Essentially, what that means is you can hook your smartphone up to the Jetta, and therefore have free navigation displayed up on that tech display, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs as well. Factory navigation system is going to come with the SEL premium trim level you can of course check out your weather information and fuel prices up on that infotainment screen as well and actually let me elaborate one more time i keep doing this on the ambient lighting what i just noticed to actually adjust the ambient lighting once your hand gets within like three inches of the infotainment screen that's when the colors pop up so they actually disappear when you take your hand away and then when you get your hand within like three inches again it notices your hand and then it pulls up the color choices so you can go ahead and make your selection that is insane i've never seen that before that is absolutely wonderful volkswagen well done i don't know how you did it but that is yet another cool little quirky feature that i just noticed right here and now so i figured i mentioned to you guys it's pretty cool anyways you can of course check out your radio information up there as well and by the way when it comes to the sound system you will find four speakers with the s s e and r line trims it's not a whole lot but if you went with one of the sel trims you will get an eight speaker beats sound system with the subwoofer and 400 watts that is the one we have today you guys so what do you say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one oh my goodness you guys ridiculous i can't emphasize this enough ridiculous amount of bass no doubt my camera was thumping a little bit there that was insane you don't need any kind of aftermarket sound system there if you wanted to go with that beat sound system that was ridiculous but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is 
When you do put the Jetta in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, all that's pretty basic at this point. SE trim level is where you're gonna to wanna to be at if you want more of the advanced safety features. That is gonna give you forward collision warning and autonomous emergency braking, along with a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. That's gonna be with the SE trim level and up. And in addition to that, the SEL trim level is going to add auto dimming rear view mirror, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and automatic high beams. Hey, so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel, after all. Feel free to pick up some merch below the video if you want to support the channel, and I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.